Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, and we like to bring you conversations that are real and relevant right here at the Crossroads. Now, usually, this is where I say you can catch me live at five every Wednesday, but there's going to be a change to my schedule. So I'm going to give you more at four on Mondays. Oh, yeah. So I hope that you are ready for the change. Be on the lookout. I'll put more information about that on my personal Facebook Live page. But all of that aside, today I am more than just a little bit delighted to share with you my very special guest who is joining us today right here live in the studio. Now, many of you know him as one of Hawaii's favorite comedians, if not your personal favorite. <laughs> Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. He sold out the Blaisdell, folks. Yeah, I read it. It was on Google, so you know it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's, <right. laughs> that's how it goes, right? He is our, our very own local style, Augie T. Hey. Hey. This is awesome. I feel like I'm in your home. Well, right technically, it looks like it, right? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's not my house. It's not as like, nice, right? Can I jump on that? Couch right well, now. I want to get on that couch. I'm going to look out that window and have that view. Not to mention, we're going to get into it a little bit later in the second half of the okay. show. But maybe some people can afford to live like that, right? If they follow some of the systems in your program that you were telling me You know me about. what? If you guys are interested, thank you for letting me share about that. Because, you know, I just read recently that Hawaii is ranked 44 when it comes to financial illiteracy. Oh, my word. And honestly, you know, I... I wasn't aware of that because a lot of us were taught by our parents and our grandparents that we have to do and work money a certain way. Right. Not knowing that, you know, there's other ways we can put money back in our pocket. So honestly, if you're really interested, uh -huh. you can always get a hold of me. I, I do lunch and learns. Like okay. You get a whole bunch of your teachers. Yeah. I'll bring lunch. Oh, really? I'll show all of our teachers, because I know you guys work hard. We do. Um, businesses. Yeah. I'll do one on ones. Okay. And uh, it's called Sweep Strategies. So log on to the website, sweepstrategies.com, and I promise this will blow you away. Wow. Well, I, my mind is already blown. Look at me. <laughs> blown. Mind blown. Um, but yeah. we want to talk about something else that you have going on. So, as I mentioned in the intro, we, we know you for comedy. We know you for acting. We know you for voiceovers at a radio station. All those wonderful things. And we congratulate you on thank all you. the success that, that those careers brought you. We thank you for bringing us years of laughter. But that's not the only thing you do. That's not the only thing that you're known for. Yeah. That's not what you're doing right now. No. So tell me, what is it that you're doing right you now? You know, uh, outside of trying to help people, you know, get on track financially and getting on the road to success, you know, about five years ago, my daughter created a foundation called Brave Hawaii. Brave is an acronym to be respectful and value everyone. She was bullied uh, when she was 11 years old. And at 13, she wrote a book called It's Okay to Be Different. Wow. You know, and uh, it was published. A lot of people got the book. She started reading. She did pageants. And that's part of the reason why she got bullied, because girls that she was friends with called her that mm. you know teased her and she's um, a beautiful girl by the way we have a picture I, right here we're going to show you know you and her and she is you know and, and she's such a great kid like you know yeah. like i love all my kids mm -hmm. you kind of look at well you know you have your favorites oh right? you and do then, you're yeah, allowed to have yeah, favorites yeah, yeah, yeah and i go <laughs> that's the one going to buy me in my house yeah <laughs> but, but you know she's such a good kid and she's such a uh, she's a go-getter, so, you know, she started reading her book at schools, and then she started reading about stories on how kids were doing bad things to themselves because mm -hmm. of bullying, and luckily, you know, with the help of my wife, you know, she was able to express how she was feeling inside, yeah. because that is the first step. I mean, if your kid is being bullied, honestly, in school, outside of school, mm -hmm. you know, you got to get involved. You got to find out what's going on in your kid's life. It's just mm -hmm. so important that you talk with them. You know what I mean? Yes. I know we're busy. I know a lot of us work two or three jobs, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised if you just give your child a moment to let them express themselves. Yeah. Five, ten minutes, mm -hmm. you'll find a lot 
in there. You know, we're able to see that because we're always constantly asking questions. Yes. How is school? And we mm -hmm. notice different behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, how she started not expressing, mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to go to school. That's right. And mm -hmm. that quickly became like a warning a red right. flag for us. Mm -hmm. So we got in there, we talked, and we found out what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of kids don't get that kind of support. And I understand because I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Mm. So Just I understand. Like the rest of us. Yes. So That's I understand right. wholeheartedly, you know, when I see and I read emails about kids being bullied and parents, you know, emailing us, what can we do? What can you do? And like, mm -hmm. you know, I only bring awareness. I wish I could do more, but really, yeah. that's all I do. And I, and I hope that our message will, you know, uh, spread so that kids will stop doing that. Kids will respect. Kids will stop really honoring each other, you know, mm -hmm. and helping each other out instead of, you know, uh, bullying. Right. But the reality is that, it would probably never end because right. we have bullies in our workplace. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are great leaders, believe it or not. And I a lot of it. them use that as a way to, like, you know, um, you know push them. Micromanage yes, and everything. climb their way to yeah, the top. And, you know, they might not bully the way they did in school, but they use that traits to mm -hmm. get them to where they, like, be at. And, you know, and a lot of it is because, you know, uh, maybe we get involved too early and not mm -hmm. letting the kid process the whole experience. Right. You know, we become right. overprotective parents. Yes. And pretty soon, it's, you know, it's so glamorized now. We only hear about the bad things. We don't hear about the yeah. kids that overcome bullying yes. and do some amazing things. And right. that's where, like, you know, going into the schools, you hear a lot of the stories, but then you also hear stories of kids who persevere and go, mm -hmm. I'm not going to let anybody talk to me that way. There and you go. amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. They become amazing students. Yes. You know, um, and they get a backbone. And right. that's what we want to try to do, right? We want to yeah. give our kids backbones. But at the same time, listen, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. and encourage. Yes. You know, so, yeah. you know, we're doing that. So my daughter, you know, um, she started reading books. And she was like, Papa, we got to do more than just read books. Right. There's middle school kids, there's, you know, high school kids, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where it all led to me getting, and, you know, I love Frank DeLima, and Frank, if you're watching this, I love you to death, but I never, like, turned into Frank DeLima. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and I thought, if right. I did that, everybody would think that I, you know, try to copy Frank DeLima and sing songs. Yeah. And, uh -huh. you know, it's totally different, because right. that's not who I am. Uh, an amazing thing happens, you know, like, I grew up really poor and it's you know, we live in Hawaii, it's beautiful, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people that challenge, you know. I yeah. my family was one of them and mm -hmm. we grew up extremely poor. But in the last couple of years doing the program with my wife my wife and my daughter, going into schools, going into communities, and I've seen a lot of people that need so much help. And yeah. I've never seen poor the way I've seen poor. Like, I grew up poor, but I've never seen poor. Like this. And it's so hard because, like, we automatically, if you have a great heart, you want to help, right? You want to help everybody yes. when you have a big heart. So I want to show a picture of you guys in the schools because okay. I think what you're doing is amazing. So right here we're going to take a look at pictures of this is you, your daughter. Yeah. Right? And she's the one. In the middle in the with the Miss Teen Cosmos. Awesome. Yeah, now. so she's the current national queen. And we use pageantry to um, inspire and empower young women. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. they do pageants, but they go into the schools. They do right. community service. Yes. They share about, you know, what they're learning mm -hmm. through pageantry mm -hmm. and to, like, you know, um, uplift other girls. And yeah. our pageants are not expensive because I know pageantry can be expensive. Yes. We make it super affordable so that... Every girl can do this, and every right. girl can experience feeling beautiful, mm -hmm. being heard, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. we want a confident and, you know, um, inspiring. Yes. 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 Just we like want, yourself. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. We want strong young women, yes. and, we, and we can Absolutely. only do that if we develop them, and we have to start young yes. in order to get that going. So you guys are starting in the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. You have a program in the middle school. Yes. Yeah, so we do, and if um, schools want us to come over and, and do 
the elementary school program, we do skits, right? Okay. Mahia shares about her bullying experience. She reads a little bit about the, she reads the book, okay. and then now uh, we do skits. Yeah. Because our kids are smart, you know. They know, oh, yeah. They know how to use the correct words, and they mm -hmm. know what words hurt other people. So right. we have a skit that describes what the bully looked like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we also give the kids an opportunity to help the bully. Ah. Yeah. Because That's a, a lot different of it is, perspective. A lot of it, yeah. A lot of it is stereotype, mm -hmm. and once you get... Take away the stereotype mm -hmm. and what a bully looks like, mm -hmm. or we perceive what the bully looks like. Mm -hmm. We realize that they're just like everybody else, going yes. through the same thing. And what we want to try to do is empower children to speak up. Mm -hmm. So when you go to BraveHawaii.org, we try to get kids to like, if you can, get on camera, ask your parents, mm -hmm. and talk about your experience because there's nothing like hearing it from another kid. Right. You know, when right. a kid hears another kid talking about it, what happens? Magic. Exactly. You know, and we talk about in the program how words are powerful. I do a little exercise mm -hmm. and how using words, and I know this because I'm a comic. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, even comedy has, you know, really taken, taken some hits because of uh, we live in a politically correct world. You got to watch yes. what you say. And I understand that. Luckily, I have a very dysfunctional family. So a lot of the <laughs> comedy, I'm teasing myself, self-deprecating, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm talking about uh, my family and mm -hmm. the stereotypes in Hawaii, which we all know and we love mm -hmm. and we laugh mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. But I also know that using one word can really mess up an old act. It's yes. the same way when you're talking to somebody on a daily basis. One mm -hmm. word can ruin yes. a kid's day, yes. a teacher's day, yes. a per every day. Everybody. Yes. So Everyone. we talk about the power of words. Right. Yeah. And we yeah. give them a lot of stats mm -hmm. because we want them to see that. You know, not only you and your school is being affected by bullying, there's a lot of people. Right. I mean, yeah. even nationally, mm -hmm. we know our current president and first lady have a big, huge um, program going for bullying right. right now. And it's because it has gone on a national level mm -hmm. that bullying is one of the top reasons for children uh, dropping out of school. Mm -hmm. Children committing suicide. Correct. There was just an article um, I read recently. I think it was about a young girl who had been bullied so much she committed suicide. Yeah. That should yeah. not happen. And it should, you know. And that's why when you saw that video at HSDA, mm -hmm. I cried because, you know, a lot of it is, you know, as a comic, I'm supposed to look at things really objective, and I'm not not supposed to. I block out the noise. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when you hear and you and you see the pain and oh man, it's hard. And and then you know you you gotta look at your own personal life and your mm -hmm. own personal challenges, and you mm -hmm. you realize this stuff will never ever end unless you know we all, you know. And I know it's hard, but I believe that if you know majority of us can just you know show kindness and love and respect. Yes. Wow. It's a game changer. Yeah. So thank I'm you, asking, thank you, thank I'm you, thank you. I'm asking you to like give money. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, hey, why not say hi? Watch your words. That's yeah, it. Yeah, like just, just use your words. You look for awesome it. today. Oh, thank you. By you the know, way, yeah, you know, little things like that is like <laughs> it's a most, huge. Yeah. yeah, it makes a difference in someone's yeah. day. So you know, and the whole objective in the elementary school program is letting the kids talk. Yes. Because yeah. they're holding, and a lot of times, believe it or not, the bullies are in the skit because the bullies are the first one to go. I go, anybody want to volunteer? They're the first ones because, uh -huh. you know, they don't want the center of attention, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. usually, mm -hmm. right? Right. I'll do it. And then they realize, man, when I go, so how do we help mm -hmm. Techno Tim? <laughs> and, you know, you get the <laughs> classmates going, you should say some nice things online. Aww. You know, because they have to solve the problem. Uh huh. You know, why? I go, why is Tim bad? Why is Techno? Because we call, give them names. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he says bad things on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he, he pretends he's me. Or, and so they know. Mm -hmm. And that's the most, like, for me, it's like, you know, you look at these kids, you see these fresh faces, and you go, wow, okay. It's smart. 
Mm-hmm. They're smart. They Our pick up on a today lot of are yeah. super smart. They definitely they know the language. They read the cues. They are on social media all the time, and they're talking about those the, all sorts of things. Right. When we come back, we're going to take a break now. Okay. When we come back, we're going to jump back into this conversation. All right. We're going to touch on some other things that okay. you have coming up that I'm super excited about. So come back to us. We are going to be right here at the crossroads. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> we're back, and I don't know how, but we were talking about carnival rides during yeah. the break. What is what? Well, you know, I'm, 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 I don't yeah. know. I'm here with this guy, Augie T, comedian extraordinaire, but also a man who is about purpose, and that is to help change the world it's one well, child at a one time. One child at a time, and yeah. I don't know about extraordinaire. I I tell people that I just got lucky. I told the truth on stage, and. <laughs> Then I start, started seeing people pay for me to tell the truth on stage, and I went, oh, so that side works. Oh. Right, you know, because, you know, for almost 16 years, I worked at a hospital. Mm-hmm. I did two, three jobs. I, you know, I, I, was, a, I was a teen dad. Wow. Uh, you you know, sound like us. Yeah. Normal folks. Yeah, and, you know, um, I told story of a very dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. That's why people ask me, oh, you tell me a joke. I don't I don't tell jokes. I tell right. stories of life and right. you know, yeah, that stuff that like you know like cracks me up. And, mm-hmm. You know, so I love you know like I'm, I haven't done comedy for a while now, like maybe mm-hmm. a couple months. Okay. And uh, something funny happened to me the other day, and I went, oh man. And I find myself like wanting to write, and then mm-hmm. I go, oh, I don't want to go down that wormhole because if I do, it's like, okay, maybe I got to go on the road now. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I, I, you know, I'm, and part of stepping away from comedy is so that I can reflect on mm-hmm. the last 27 years wow. and find out where did this stuff, I stopped having fun. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Like, I yeah. love doing comedy, but like, it became work. work. And mm-hmm. a lot of us go to jobs that we hate, mm-hmm. but we have to you do that to support our families. And yeah. I just felt like it was work. And I, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to yeah. find the magic again. If it doesn't yeah. come, it doesn't. I I did what I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish. So yeah, you accomplished your goal while doing that, Correct. which is a wonderful thing. Yeah, I think there was a lot of personal development in that because laughter is the best medicine. Yes, I think you definitely caused a lot of laughter for others, and you just said you cracked yourself up. Correct. You know, I always tell people like. I'm always amazed when I see a line of people coming in to watch me do comedy because mm-hmm. they tell me, and I have seen some of the, and heard some of the greatest stories of people who um, came to my shows the last 27 years and they came because somebody in their family was dying from cancer and how mm-hmm. that helped their life for that moment, um, got into accidents and their, coming to the show as a remembrance. Yeah. How they wow. were like down and out and they came to the show and they laughed. Had one guy, because uh, I have two openly gay sons. Okay. Uh, one guy who was in prison mm-hmm. and he saw the DVD and he said he made the decision not wanting to disown his son. And, because of you. And this is a, this guy, Mm-hmm. I was scared to talk to him. He saw me at like <laughs> Don Quixote. I went into his bathroom. He was like, hey, I talk to you. And I was like, 
oh no, here it comes. <laughs> but it was like, it all got, he said that he wanted to kill his son. Oh, wow. That's because so it was like, like, yeah, I'm going to believe that. You yeah. know, and he yeah. said, I watched the video. And, you know, what you saw was a little frustration for me. Uh -huh. And when I was saying stuff like, you know, not everybody created the chill, you know, everybody wants their sons to be like, you know, I wish my son would be Sugar Ray Leonard because I was a boxer. Okay. You know, right. I, I remember that. Not a ballerina. But, you know, <laughs> and I was like, people laugh about it. But then, you know, I love my kids, but then that was the frustration at that time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's our children. That's the same child that we held in our mm -hmm. arms and we said mm -hmm. I was going to do whatever I can to make sure that you're taken care of yes. and at some point they make their own choices that's right you know that's and I told right. and that's, that's something that I cannot stop right you know and I right. told them that they're going to have to live with they're going to have to live with the fact that they're going to always get criticized mm -hmm. and that not everybody agree on their lifestyle mm -hmm. and you have to respect that yeah you know a lot of yeah. times we hear so much like, that's why I love social media, but I hate it because now right. everybody has a voice to be loud. Yes. You know, and yes. they're not really helping. And a lot of times the loudest ones create the, the hugest yeah. following. Yes. So if you find somebody that's loud like you, then you band together. And now right. you're this whole big social media bullying Correct. gang. Right. And that's not what we want. That's oh. it's certainly not what it was designed and, for. And, I, you know, because dad is an entertainer, I got attacked a lot. But... Mm -hmm. I think I have a really tough skin, and my yeah. kids have seen that. Like, mm -hmm. people say bad things about me, like, I don't care. I don't like you anyway. Right. So that was my whole <laughs> deal, right? Uh, but I told them, like, you know, your lifestyle is challenging. And that's mm -hmm. why, like, you know, going into the schools, seeing the kids get picked on, mm -hmm. you know, I think they already know. Nobody ever wants to get bullied. Right. And I told them, I, I said that so many times. My sons never, like, get bullied. Mm -hmm. but that's who they are. Like, mm -hmm. Why is it so hard to respect that? Right. You know? Yeah. They're not going to your house and, mm -hmm. and you know, you know. Bothering you. Yeah. Or... Why are you, yeah. why are you so concerned mm -hmm. about what they do? Right. They work. Mm -hmm. They pay into a government. Mm -hmm. and... They are productive citizens. Correct. And shouldn't be treated right. any different so, than anyone else. So, you know, I'm a big advocate for that. You know, mm -hmm. and I tell my, my children that you have to understand there's still a lot of people that don't accept but you have to respect that mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. be disrespectful that don't you don't have to get loud and, and try to be mean and right whip your head around yeah and, you know uh -huh. snap point kick uh -huh. you have to do none no. of that no listen because then you'll hear the ignorance right then you'll go i get it right you know what i mean and yeah. you walk away it's it's gonna hurt but you get people who love you right i think one of, that's one of the things i want to emphasize to kids, don't feel like there's people around you that's not listening and you being bullied. There's people that are ready to sit down and listen and love you and want to hear what's happening. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't push them away. Don't push mm -hmm. them out. That's right. Because sometimes all we need is to be heard that's right. and express. Yeah. And you know what? I think there are two sides to that coin, coin because... You have the child who's being bullied. And right now, there's a lot of emphasis being placed on children who are being bullied. Mm -hmm. The work that you do does that. And we appreciate that. I think the other side to that coin is no one ever once said, you know what? When I get in third grade, I want to be a bully. Right. So they are also So hurting. I am a firm believer that it starts at home. Hmm. You hmm. know? Hello. Yeah. And, you know, we cannot depend on government. We mm -hmm. cannot be, depend on our teachers. They're working hard and overwork. The last thing they need to do is fill out a form because one kid or two kids is being disruptive in free public education. You know, mm -hmm. we're sending our children to school because they want to learn. They want to grab, take. Uh -huh. You know, and mm -hmm. I love teachers because if it wasn't for teachers, I would not be sitting with you right now. All right. Because my mom and dad... We're busy working, but mm -hmm. someone pulled it aside, mm -hmm. put me on the side, and I could see that she loved me mm -hmm. for who I was, and she mm -hmm. said, I think you can do amazing things. Let mm -hmm. me help you. That was it. Yes. That was, yeah. that's, and sometimes that's all it takes. Right. But it starts at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Like, and it starts, you know, we, uh, and I'm a, 
we cannot rely on government and we cannot rely on teachers. If you're seeing this and you're watching this and you're going, I like what he's saying, you, and I tell this when I go speak at conferences, you should want to top what I do. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I sat down and watched a comedian 27 years ago, and I went, I'm funnier than that guy. Hmm. Not being mean or anything, but yeah. I went, I'm funnier than that, than that guy. So I mm -hmm. went and I went to a comedy club, and I, I signed up, did an open mic, and that was it. Yeah. Everything that we do starts from something small, right? right? And you got to look at our program and go, I can do better than that. Then do it. I'm I believe if we do 10, 20, if we all going in and we mm -hmm. all saying the, basically the same message, mm -hmm. guess what? We're going to infect a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do, you know, we're going to take responsibility. We're going to say we are taking responsibility of our children mm -hmm. because I don't want my kid being bullied anymore. Right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create something, right. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I like what he said. It starts at home. Work with your children. He had conversations with his, his daughter who was coming home. And when the conversations got fewer and fewer, that was a red flag. It's a red flag. And you knew that there was something else going on. And there's tips. You know, you can go to bravehoy.org. Uh, again, we don't have all the answers, but there's tips. You can mm -hmm. go and you can read, mm -hmm. you know, signs, tips. Um, you know, there's a lot of kids hurt hurting themselves because they think that nobody is listening to them so they're listening to what other people has, have to say online right. and that's and, awful yeah it is they, they should not do that at all yeah and so you know our message right now is be brave mm -hmm. right go to bravehawaii.org find out more information about that program and how they can get involved mm -hmm. and then last thing i want to touch on okay. is you've got something coming up in june we uh, yes we have uh, well, it's in May. In May. Yes. Uh, it's called, uh, which is kind of cool, the first annual Brave Hawaii Riders Against Bullying Run. Oh, my. So we're going to have a bunch of bike riders. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. And they're selling bands for $10, T-shirts for $10, mm -hmm. and part of the proceeds will go to Brave. But they're saying, hey, you know, bikers are stereotype. Yeah. You know, and it was so hard getting a venue mm -hmm. to host bikers. Right. You know, because you know, we're talking about motorcycle like, yes, riders. We have this yeah. image of these, you know, these tattooed yeah. guys. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> it was like, oh, well, you know, they're bike riders. I go, no, they try to bring awareness to bullying, and, which yeah. is awesome. So I want to say hi to the Divine Guardians and right. uh, Bike Club. And, you know, they're the ones that said, hey, we want to try to get involved and help. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're doing a, a motorcycle bike run. Well, hey. And it's going to be at Psycho City May 5th, and some of the girls of the pageant will perform. My daughter will talk. I will talk. Okay. And it's just going to be a fun day of music, vending, uh, information, okay. vendors that you can get good food. Oh, I like good and food. And look at beautiful yeah. bikes. Okay. Maybe you can jump on one of the bikes. I'm going to get on a big, fat Harley and make yeah. loud sounds. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it May 5th. Yes. All right. I'm going to look that up. We can find out more information about that on your website, bravehawaii.org. Yeah. Thank you so much, Augie T, for all that you're doing. Thank you for really. having me. I mean, it's people like you at Change in the World, too, doing shows like this. And, you know, I uh, like, you know, we're just like tiny fishes in the ocean. Just, That's right. Just trying to kind of survive and, you know, yeah. trying to do good things. And, yeah. you know, when they say you give, you get back, I honestly believe that. So. I do too. I do too. And I love giving and I love being a part of things that are really positive. If you, if you guys ever need any help, I'm not really sure what I can do to help uh, because I'm a teacher already. But Are you doing a lot already? I just want to bring awareness. I yeah. definitely want to make sure people hear about this. You heard it here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm sorry, yeah, thinktechhawaii.com. I'm thinking Brave Hawaii. It's all about Brave Hawaii. Be brave, be respectful, and value everyone. And value everyone. That's all we ask you to do, people. It's not that hard. You can catch me now on Mondays at four, where I'll give you lots of more of these great, lots more of these great conversations. I gotta get the hang of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. It's a tough twist. I'm dyslexic. Believe me, I mess up no. all the time. Yeah. I do a radio show. I stutter. I yeah. yeah. And it's because I'm taking 17 sentences ahead. Right. 
right? Yeah. We're way down the I'm line. Like, so what's coming out correct. was like a paragraph ago. And believe it or not, I'm listening to <laughs> I'm I'm watching you, but I'm you know I see lights on right. the side. I'm There's wondering what the on. guy's doing in the booth. Right. What are you right. saying to I me? I want to jump ear? on your couch. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of my dyslexia, my ADHD is like running wild. Get right this now. guy out of here. He's yeah. about to tear up the station. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wild one. We love you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for watching. You've been watching At the Crossroads with your girl Keisha King. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Aloha. It's your girl. It's your girl. <laughs>